Hi, I'm Fraser Douglas, the avid tent camper, and it's a beautiful spring day in April of 2016. Ava and I are walking around Montesano State Park, and I thought I would talk about how to select a good campsite in a popular campground during the peak camping season. First, let me offer some general observations. Most large campgrounds with more than 40 campsites accept advanced reservations, but many smaller campgrounds, especially small U.S. Forest Service campgrounds, do not. County and municipal park vary considerably in terms of their reservation policies. To determine a campground's reservation policy, visit its webpage and perhaps call its office for details. If you want to camp in a large popular campground on a July or summer holiday weekend, you must reserve your campsite many months in advance. For example, if you want to camp in Wisconsin's Peninsula State Park, you must reserve a site about 12 months in advance. If you want to camp in Michigan's popular Ludington State Park, you must reserve your site about six months in advance. To reserve a campsite in a U.S. Army Corps of Engineers campground or a National Park Service campground or any other uh, federal agency, you usually must go to the www recreation.gov website to make these reservations. To reserve a campsite in a particular campground, you must first register on the recreation.gov website and then get a password. Then go to the website for your chosen campground, select a specific site, and reserve it by entering the dates of your arrival the number of days you plan to stay, and your payment information. To reserve a campsite in a state park, you must go to the state park homepage to determine its procedures. Every state uses a different uh, reservation system. Many states contract with www.reserve america.com to make their reservations. To reserve specific sites, patrons must first register and get a password. Other states, such as Alabama and Georgia, allow patrons to call a reservation number and guarantee a spot, but not a specific campsite. Now, let me talk about desirable campsite features to look for when searching for a campsite. First of all, look for campsites that are large, level, unpaved, with good drainage. Ideally, the campsite should measure at least 40 feet by 40 feet and have a total of 1,600 square feet. Elevated tent pads provide the best drainage, but unfortunately, many campgrounds do not provide them. A crushed stone surface usually provides good drainage. Look for campsites that are clean and well-groomed. Also look for trees that can provide some afternoon shade and places to hang clotheslines and hammocks. Good campsites should also have buffer zones between campsites that dampen noise and provide a little bit of privacy. These buffer zones should be at least 10 feet wide. Look for campsites that have a sturdy picnic table that can be moved any place you want. The campsite should also have a fire ring 
that is located near the front or side edge of the campsite rather than in the middle of it. A sturdy cooking grate is desirable but frequently not provided. To be safe, campers should bring their own cooking grates. The campsite should be located relatively close to a bathroom and have a convenient parking area. Now let me list some undesirable campsite features. First of all, when possible, avoid campsites with large paved parking pads because the surrounding unpaved area of these campsites frequently collects rainwater. Avoid campsites with a steep grade because sleeping on the side of a hill can be uncomfortable. Also, try to avoid campsites with concrete picnic tables because these picnic tables are almost never located where you want them. Avoid campsites that have overgrown understory vegetation and poison ivy. Also avoid campsites that are located close to the water's edge and close to trash dumpsters because these sites may attract small animals and snakes. If a campground accepts reservations, determine the dates of your trip as soon as possible and then try to find a campground map. Most federal properties publish campground maps on their websites and also display them on the recreation.gov website. Some states, such as Michigan, publish great campground maps for every state park, but other states do not publish campground maps. In these cases, search the web for maps that may have been posted by past patrons and also look for books such as Best Intent Camping that may have a campground map. If the state uses recreation.gov to make its reservations, you may find a campground map on this website. Then search for campsite photos and descriptions. Both recreation.gov and Reserve America publish brief descriptions of each campsite and frequently present one or more photos of each site. Other websites and books also publish campsite descriptions and photos. Search these to identify the best and the worst campsites in your chosen campground. Once you've selected a few choices, go to the website or call the campground office to determine which sites are available for the dates of your planned trip. If a campground does not accept reservations, plan to arrive early in the week to get the best selection of campsites. Sunday and Monday arrivals will have the best selection of sites. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday will also usually have a good selection of sites. But late Friday night and Saturday arrivals may not find any available sites. Once you arrive, follow registration instructions. Sometimes they instruct you to set up your campsite first and then return to complete the registration. Well, I hope you've learned a little bit more about selecting a good campsite in a popular campground during the peak camping season. For more information about good campgrounds, please visit my website, www.basictentcamping.com, and read my book titled Basic Tent Camping. Remember, take more trips, travel further, visit more attractions, and save money. Go tent camping.